This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Conan Exiles video. Today we're going to take a look at an extremely strong PvE character build for Sipta. Let's get to it. Just a quick disclaimer before we get into the stats, the items, and all of that stuff. This build is not super min-maxed. This build is strong not being min-maxed. And the reason that I did that is because I wanted to leave a little wiggle room for you to modify the build to fit your specific play style. The build is designed for ranged combat using a bow and melee combat alike. So let's start off taking a look at the stats here. So this is what your stats should look like. 20 in strength, 10 in agility, 30 in vitality, 30 in accuracy, 28 in grit, and 12 in encumbrance. Once we come over here and we equip all of our armor pieces and take a look at those stats again, you can see we get an additional two. And then it, the two here and the eight here ensure that we get these other perks in grit and encumbrance. If we take a look at our armor value, you can see we are at 383, which gives us a total damage reduction of 60%. And that is in light armor. And the reason I want light armor is because that's going to maximize our ability to dodge and get out of the way quicker. And uh, yeah, it's helpful. I prefer light over heavy. For our helmet, we are using the aspect of the demon. That's going to give us 192 armor. Now note that none of these have any kits on them. Put whatever kits on your armor you want. You can increase your armor even more. You can make it lighter, whatever you want to do. It's pretty light as it is. You can see here, another perk of wearing light armor is uh, most of it weighs next to nothing. This is a little heavy, but yeah, so modify it however you want to modify it. Then we have for our chest piece, we have the Void Forge Dragon Hide Tunic. Our gloves are the gloves of Guile, Jill, however you pronounce that. We're going to use the, the Gray One's Kilt and Boots of the Serpent. That's going to give us that nice bonus to encumbrance that we have over here, that eight bonus. Now there is a little bit of wiggle room in the chest piece. If for some reason you cannot manage to get this, you've been sinking tons of points or tons of the shards over there into the center and you can't seem to get it, you can also use the Silent Legion Light Pauldron. It's the exact same stats. If we drag that over here and we take a look, 56 armor value, 56 armor value. They're both light and they both give the exact same bonus to strength. The only difference is durability. You can see the Silent Legion only has 900 while the Void Forge Dragon Hide Tunic has 1,800. That's the only thing you're sacrificing to get this. In order to get this, you need to farm the Silent Legion using the Silent Legion figurine and you can farm that over at the Grey One Pools for those of you who don't know. I'll show you that near the end of the video and get a little bit more into detail of that. But yeah, so you can farm that over there it has a chance to drop you can try either of these when you're trying to do this build i highly advise doing both go over to the gray ones that's where you can find a lot of these statues farm for this and farm for this at the same time whichever one you get use it to get the helmet the gloves and the boots you're going to need to do some vaults so for the aspect of the demon you need to do the demise of the demon spiders to get the gloves you need to do valerie of gile gile however that's freaking pronounced and for the boots of the serpent you need to do the sanctuary of the serpent men to get the gray ones kilt this can drop from killing the gray ones so if you're over there farming statues there's a good chance that this is just going to drop for you if it does not you can get the armor recipes for them right here and we're over here at that location now this is what the area looks like and right here is where you pick up the armor so just look at that interact with it and that's going to give you the gray one's armor now let's talk about the sigils because there's some super handy sigils that are going to obviously all of the sigils are great just get all of them but if you want to fool with only the ones that are absolutely necessary to just really set off this build uh, of course you need the sigil of the fiend you're going to need to do that anyway because we need the fiend bone shield really good shield i'll explain more why we need that in a second so that's going to keep you from losing your sigils right away if you die next up we want the twice drown that is going to allow you to occasionally uh, attack without stamina cost just super handy all around next up we want sigil of the demon that's going to allow you to run further without rest so less stamina usage while you're running 
followed by the Sigil of the Wolfman. That is going to allow you to regain health when you kill an enemy. It gives you 20 HP per kill. Then we want the Sigil of the Snakeman. That is going to cleanse you when you have bleeding. And then we want the Sigil of the Serpent that is going to cleanse you when you have poison. Some bonus ones that you can also go for are the Brood one here, which will help reduce fall damage. Just handy to have if you want to go for it. And then Sigil of the Outsider, which will cleanse you of corruption periodically. This one, I mean, this one just prevents you from needing a Dancer. It's... Meh, it's just nice to have so you can cleanse while your corruption while you're out and about and you don't have to worry about going back to base to get cleansed from a dancer. But I highly recommend getting all of these here. They're pretty much necessary. Let's talk about weapons. So for the weapons, we're using the Feroxic Bow because it gives a huge bonus to agility. So while you are in ranged mode, you will get a nice armor increase. You can see we're at 383 now. If we equip this, now we're at 423. We want from 60% reduction to 62% reduction. So you get a 2% increase in your damage reduction while you are in ranged mode because it boosts your agility up. It also gives you the cat-like fall damage perk. So that's part of the reason that I recommend getting uh, this here because uh, you don't always have to have your bow equipped when you fall to, to, to reduce your fall damage. If you know you're going to take fall damage, just equip your bow and that's going to set this perk for you and help reduce your fall damage. For shield melee, you have two options. You have the ghoulish club, or the Void Forge Dagger. The Ghoulish Club can be farmed from the ghouls if with the ghoul figurine over at the Grey Ones pools. They have a chance to drop the Ghoulish Club. It does 56 damage, but has 27% armor pin and it poisons on hit. The Void Forge Gladius is the one you really want to go for because it does 73 damage, 17% armor pin, and poisons on hit, and short swords are just super strong they are so good and i'll show you why here in a minute then you want the fiend bone shield obviously you're going to go for the sigil of the fiend so you're going to pick this up while you're there it's part of their armory uh you want that because it gives you bonus strength then of course since you're going to have the feroxic bow get the feroxic daggers i have the durability kit on these to help increase their durability you can put whatever kit on them you want it doesn't really matter. Now, I do highly recommend farming for the Bile of Strength and putting that on either your Gladius or the Club. And the reason is that's gonna boost our strength even more. Once I equip the shield and I equip the Get Gladius with that on it, you can see it boosts us all the way up to that next perk giving us Slice and Dice. If I unequip those, you can see it takes us back down here. You definitely want to try to farm for that. Otherwise, if you just have the shield equipped and we take a look here, it puts us just short. You could manage your perks a little bit, maybe take some points out of encumbrance to boost that up so that when you do have the shield equipped, it, it puts you there at the, the third perk. But I like, I like the way it is now and just farming for this. If you want to farm for, for the bile, I'm having, I'm really struggling to talk today. If you want to farm for the bile, you can find it here. So this is at the top side of the tower. And if we drop down here, there is this guy right here. This guy is one of the guys that, that drops the bile. So if we kill him, um, he did not drop it. He has a chance to drop it. He doesn't always drop it. Both times I killed him, he's dropped schematic fragments though. So must have a pretty high chance to drop that. But yeah, these guys right here, these are the ones that have a chance to drop the bile. Another nice little helpful thing to have is the healing water skin. The healing on this thing is honestly trash, but if you're standing in water, you can just keep drinking it over and over and over again. And there's a lot of water all over the place on Sipta, so it's not hard to find an area where there is water. Just stand in a puddle of water and keep drinking it until you're full health. The arrows that we're using are the Void Forge arrows. Why are we using them? Because they stack to 200 and they only weigh 10. So they weigh what a normal normal stack of arrows that only stacks to 100 ways so you can literally carry twice as many so you can carry 400 and it only going to cost you 20 weight their damage isn't amazing it's only 10 and they don't have armor pen but between the damage that you put out and the damage that the bow has 
they do okay damage. Now I want to show you the difference between the Gladius and the club and why you want to try your best to get the Gladius, but I know it can be frustrating because it's RNG. So if you need something to hold you over until you get it, the club is much easier to get. It dropped for me the very first time I tested to see the, uh, that I tested the ghouls. It dropped for me the very first time. So the reason you want the Gladius is because the Gladius's damage output is way more and a lot faster. If we hold down block and we do a heavy attack followed by a bunch of light attacks, you can see we do a bunch of jabs there really quickly and do an absolute ton of damage super fast and we stack six bleeds in a row and then we hit it one more time. We did that additional seven. So you can get, or sorry, poisons, not bleeds. So you can stack a lot of poisons really quickly. Now, if we use the club and we do that, it's completely different situation the club Stat, or the club attacks much slower. You can see the club does do okay damage. It's not, it's not bad. And it stacks poisons just fine. And it also gives you the sunder, which is kind of nice. So you can do your combos, do your full combos and get that sunder stacks on there, which is gonna increase your damage over time. The club is definitely not a bad option. It just does not put out damage as fast as the Gladius. Even if we run in and we're just doing light attacks, look at this thing. It's crazy because your animations, you're not doing any of that swing around nonsense. So if we attack with the club, you can see we're swinging around. All those animations, animations take time. This, you're just slashy, 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 and you're putting out a ton of damage, and you're also stacking those poisons extremely fast. So you can see there, we're just going crazy, but my favorite combo is just a hold down block, go in with a heavy, and then a bunch of light attacks, and you do those quick jabs, you put your block back up, wait for the opponent to attack, rinse and repeat, you're just gonna absolutely destroy everything. One of the perks to using the club though, is that you're going to get more durability. You can see the default durability on this thing is 1,650, and the Gladius is 1,324.8. Once you get the, the bile mod on those, it actually brings the durability down, so you can see the Ghoulish Club sets at 1,237.5 with the mod on it. And if we take a look at the Gladius, that's going to bring us down to 993.6. So you are getting more durability, which means you're going to have, you're going to repair less and use less kits or use less Eldarium to repair the thing. That's pretty much it for the build. Now we're over here at the pools. I want to show you the two statues and how to easily farm either of those. We're going to start off farming the Silent Legion figurine here. It's super easy to do. So when they spawn in, and many people already know this, if you already know this trick, uh, thanks for watching the video. If you don't, I'm going to show you how to farm them really easy. Make sure you got a thrall with you. Any thrall will do it. It can be a trash thrall. It doesn't matter. Uh, if it's crappy, it's just going to take longer. But what should happen is they should just focus you and then your thrall is going to attack them. So what you want to do is you want to kind of run in a tight circle and that's going to allow your thrall to hit them. Be careful they don't hit you. That spear one's got a lot of reach. So you just want to kind of keep moving here and the thrall should eventually kill them all. You can see the thrall is hitting them. That spear one is rough. You can also use a bow and cripple them. If you have cripple, that's going to help the thrall get on them more and slow them down a little bit. You can see that one there has already taken a ton of damage. Another thing you can do is you can kind of get them to group up a little bit, but you can't stay long. You can run up here and jump up on the side up here like this and let the thrall start attacking them. But don't stay up there long because once they break aggro, they will attack your thrall. And let me tell you what, these three guys right here will absolutely destroy your thrall. So you need to make sure that that doesn't happen and that they stay fixated on you. And then that's pretty much it. You can see there, the thrall there is making pretty short work of them when he does get hits in, but you're just gonna do a lot of running in a circle. And that spear one there is going to make this technique a little bit difficult because it does have a lot of, well, I mean, spears have reach. That's why reach. That's what's going to make it difficult. If you manage to get one down, it's pretty easy to keep the other two crippled that so you can see here. Just keep shooting them. That's going to let Thrall get in on them like that. Once Thrall gets in on them, you can get a couple of really good hits on them. It really makes all the difference in the world. But you can see here, we got one slowed down and then we'll just start shooting the other. And then we can just rotate back and forth and you're adding to the damage as well. Slow them down like that. And there you go, piece of cake. When the Thrall decides to actually attack. Come on Thrall, one more hit, one more hit. You got it, buddy, you got it, you got it. There you go. 
And you can use that exact same technique with the other ones as well. So if we take a look here, uh, this one dropped the Silent Le Legion Medium and this one draw medium tacit as well and let's take a look at the other one so they can drop any any piece of any of the silent legions from what i've seen and silent legion medium once again so they all drop medium that time also got a tablet of power a bunch of fragments of power schematics and telus laminate which is not bad and i think they dropped sorrow as well i didn't look at the weapons to see but uh, I'm positive they drop sorrow as well. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's it. And so the other guys here, these guys are going to be way, 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 way easier. And for this one, I recommend the Feroxic Daggers. You can get these things super early on. You just go to the Flotsam, uh, collect as much Flotsam as possible. I actually show uh, uh, how to do that in my Let's Play series and where you can find it at. And WAC4863 has got a really good video as well on his channel showing all of the different locations. But you get go there, you can get the handles, and then this dungeon, I show how to break the dungeon that you can find the Feroxic weapons in. Super simple to break. I show that in my Let's Play as well. And uh, yeah, so the reason for that is don't let them get around you. They will try to surround you. But you can hit multiple when you're swinging around like that. And you also allow Thrall to get in there and hit as well. And you can see here, when we're hitting them with Feroxic, we put a ton of bleed, ton of poison on them. They go down really quickly. And they don't have the reach like the Silent Legion, so you can keep them in a really tight little circle here. You can see we just laid waste to a bunch or two at a time there and put a ton of poison and bleed on them. And uh, yeah, you're gonna make super short work of these guys. They're really, 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 really easy to bring down. We took a little bit of hit there, but I got decent armor on, so uh, if you don't have decent armor on, they might hit a little bit harder. But if you don't have Veroxic yet and you do want to run them, just do the same circle trick. All right, let's see what we got here. So they dropped the Ghoulish Pike, which has poison on it. Uh, the Ghoulish Pike again. No ghoul weapon there. There's the club and uh, nothing there. And they also dropped the Bile, which can help you. I think that helps you get Icker, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, helps you create Icker in the Fluid Press. Alright, and that's pretty much it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I put out other videos. If you run this build, let me know what you think about it down in the comments section. Alright, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. I want to give an absolutely massive shout out and thank you to my supporters on Patreon for making this episode possible. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my Lee Crow Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.